Do you frequently open new windows only to immediately question your entire desktop philosophy? Do you feel trapped or confined by so-called layouts, tiling rules, and rational UX decisions? Do you find yourself arguing with strangers on IRC at 2 in the morning about client-side versus server-side window decorations, confidently citing benchmarks you never actually ran? Well, you may be suffering from chronic window manager novelty deficiency. But don't worry, help is here. Ask your package manager if Neary is right for you. What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing and configuring Neary. Neary is a scrollable tiling Wayland compositor that masquerades as a window manager. Some of the unique features of Neary include infinite horizontal scroll, dynamic workspaces like in GNOME, an overview that zooms out workspaces in Windows, built-in screenshot UI, per monitor workspaces, shout out to the Linux cast because I know he loves that so much, and he also loves x and Satellite, which we'll get into later, and much more. To quote a famous philosopher, Argocrates, Neri is the anti-window manager. I can just constantly spawn new windows without having to worry about my window manager trying to manage my window layouts. The only downside is that sometimes I forget that I have 300 terminals opened all the way to the right. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the installation. All right, so we're gonna be using Arch Linux for today's demonstration, but this is gonna work on NixOS, Gen2, LFS, etc. So I'll leave install instructions for all three of those distributions in the written guide in a link below the subscribe button. But for Arch, all we need to do is grab two packages from the AUR. That's going to be Neri and Noctalia Shell. And there we go. We're going to use Noctalia Shell today as a bar because I've used Waybar for all of my previous Wayland videos and I wanted to shake things up a bit. I'll do more of a deep dive on Quick Shell in a separate video, but for today we're just going to focus on Neri and how to customize and utilize it. If you're interested in the Noctalia Shell documentation, head over to their documentation site here, and it provides a lot of information on everything you need here. Alright, so before we launch into Neri, we're going to have to grab a couple additional tools here. We need to make sure to grab Alacrity as our terminal emulator. We're going to get Fuzzle, which is a run launcher for Wayland, and this is the one that Neri uses by default. We'll grab SwayBG, of course, for wallpapers. We're going to get Firefox as our bloated web browser of choice. And as always, JetBrains Mono Nerd for our font. And for me personally, I do need X Wayland support, but Neri's default is X Wayland Satellite, so you're gonna need to grab that. And we'll talk more about that later. But for now, just let that rip. All right. So we are ready to jump into Neri now, so let's go ahead and kill our X session here. And to get into Neri, all we need to do is just type Neri from the TTY. All right, so we're in Neri now. And as you can see, this awesome help tool reminds you of the default keybinds. And you can open this at any time with super shift slash. So first thing we're going to do is open up a terminal here. And the default bind for that is super T. And in Neri, it opens everything as a column. So let's just full screen this with super F. And a couple things off the gate that I do not like. One is this client decorator here. I don't need to see this. Another couple things we'll handle as well, but let's jump straight into the config file. It's gonna be Neary config.kdl. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add this option at the top of the file called prefer no CSD. And this flag will make Neary ask the applications to omit their client side decorations. So we don't have to see this header, for example, on Alacrity. And we could demonstrate that by opening another Alacrity. And there you go, it's gone, so. Beautiful thing about Neri is once you save the config file, it applies immediately to your session here. All right, so let's fix the keyboard repeat rate. And here's how we're gonna do it in Neri. In the keyboard section, we're gonna do repeat rate 35 and repeat delay 200. And again, that's just like that X set R rate 235 command that we always run on our X org window managers. I'll be cleaning up some comments as we move through this file, but yeah. Moving on to the next section, we've got the touchpad. We don't need these comments here. And for the touchpad, for me, I am actually on a desktop machine here, but on my laptop, I I do prefer the natural scroll to be off. So I'll go ahead and comment that out, but I will leave all of these options commented out in my config. So you guys can adjust them as needed for your preferences. For the mouse, nothing there needed to change. Clean up some of these comments here. And we will actually uncomment this focus follows mouse. 
We want this so that our focus follows our mouse, obviously. And what that looks like is we'll open a terminal, open another one, and now we see that it focuses whatever our mouse is hovering. So there we go. All right, so for the monitor section here, this is gonna come down to your specific setup here. For me, I've got three monitors and I've set them up like this accordingly. And what you're gonna have to do is run Neary MSG outputs and parse this information and figure out what it is that you need to set in your output section for Neary. So for me, I've got my main monitor, which is that 1440p, 165 hertz um, position set correctly. And I've got my vertical monitor on the left, transform 90 degrees. And then I've got my third monitor here that we're looking at right now. And this is over on the right side. So it does support triple monitors and it supports per monitor scaling, of course, because we are on Wayland technology. So. There you go. All right. So in this bind section here, I'm going to change a couple things. We don't need any of these comments. All right. So for these binds, this is for the terminal. First thing I'm going to do is change the terminal to super enter. Yeah, that's much better. Now we've got a million terminals at our disposal here. All right. And for fuzzle again, fuzzle's fine. It looks OK. I'm cool with it. But for me, I'm going to use Rofi because it's cross compatible with Wayland and I already have a config for it. So we'll use this as an example on how to show how to run a SH script via spawn SH. So we'll change this to spawn SH and in here we'll type Rofi dash show D run. Save that. And there you go. It's already ready to go. And for me, I've got this custom script for screenshots. And that's just going to be a one line script that just invokes Grim with the slurp geometry and pipes it into WL copy. And I've gone over this in a previous video. It's pretty simple. I'll leave that in the dot files. And we've got some various XF86 volume increase and decrease commands here. So that's already going to work for me. We'll leave these as they are. And the defaults for Neary are pretty good. So I only need to change one more thing here. All right. So moving on to the workspace binds, let's go to this section here for move column to workspace. And we're actually just going to change all of currencies of control to shift in this little block here, because for me personally, I like to use super shift one, super shift two, etc., to move something to a workspace. And we'll save that. And that's going to be it. We're about 95% complete with the config. The file reloads automatically. And like I said, the good thing about Neary is that the defaults are actually pretty good out the gate. So we don't have to do much modification to this file. So we can quit that and kind of show you, we can start opening a bunch of terminals. We want a second workspace. We can go up and down workspaces with super I and super U. We can go left and right, etc. cetera. We can get to an overview here with super O. And yeah, it's pretty powerful. And on the laptop, all of the gestures work with the trackpad. So make sure to take advantage of that. Let's close some of these. All right, so let's move on to adding the Noctelia shell. So let's jump back into that config file here. And let's head over down to the spawn section. All right, so we want to actually test to see if our Noctelia shell is working. So let's go ahead and run quickshell-c.config quickshell Noctelia shell. And that's going to run quickshell and point the config file to this directory. All right, that looks good. So that command works. And let's also test the swaybg here. So swaybg for me, I'm going to run swaybg i walls minimal. And I like this dune.jpg file here. And let's take a look and see if that worked. Yep, there we go. We've got our dune background. Perfect. So we want both of those commands to run on startup. But since they are sh scripts, we have to run them like so spawn sh at startup. But we'll just put both of those commands here to be run as shell scripts when Neary starts up. And there we go. We should be good to go. So we can quit this file. And if we restart Neary, everything should be in theory good to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to run pkill Neary and I will be in a TTY and I'm just going to run Neary again, but I can't record that because OBS is in my Neary session here. So catch you guys on the other side. All right. So we've loaded into Neary here and we do see we've got that background set up here and we've got the Noctelia theme quick shell here. So a couple things we can do right now is with this quick shell, we do have a bit of a GUI here. So that's why I feel like this is sort of a replacement for GNOME because it's kind of a desktop environment. But anyway, you can tinker with all the settings in here as needed. The first thing I did was I went to the color scheme and I changed it to Tokyo Night, which is great because they have that by default. And the second thing I did was disable the dock because I don't need that. But besides that, you can customize the bar however you want. You can add widgets, remove them, change the settings of said widgets, etc. Not going to go super in detail on this because 
quick shell deserves its own video in the future, which I'll be making, but for now we've got it running, we're good to go. So let's do a couple more changes into our Neary config to make it a little bit better. So we'll open up that config file again here. Dot config Neary config.kdl. Let's go to the layout section here. I'm gonna delete all these comments. For the gaps, I don't need that much gaps, so let's change this from 16 to five. Yeah, that's a lot better. For the comments, again, I'm gonna clear some of these. Don't need them. Proportions are fine. Preset column whips are fine. For the focus width ring, I will do a 1.5 there, and that is a little bit better for me as well. That's gonna be the border around what you have focused, so that's good for me. So for the active and inactive color, but you know what, I will go ahead and change these to my Tokyo night colors just to be consistent here. All right, and for the border, I'm also gonna put the width at 1.5. I don't really care about shadows. So the next thing I wanna talk about is window rules. And to do this, we're gonna demonstrate this by adding named workspaces. Now, this is the part where we jump into window manager territory. And I know Neary doesn't encourage that because they say you should work with the dynamic workspace model. But since I'm coming from DWM, I have to think of this in some level as a window manager, even though it's not. But in order to make that happen, let's add some custom workspaces here. So we'll add three empty workspaces a, B, and C, and then we'll add a window rule for Firefox. So we'll do match title Firefox, and we'll do open on workspace C, and open maximized true. So that's gonna tell Neary to always open Firefox on the C workspace. But right now we actually don't know what workspace is C, but we need to tell Quickshell to actually use the name instead of the index here. So once we do that, we can see CBA. So for me, my hack for this is that I just hit super shift U to move C to the third position and then move B to the second position as well. So now I always know that Firefox will open on the third workspace. So if we open Firefox here, it'll always open on the third workspace now, which is good. So I can just get to it with super three and it's always gonna open full screen. So that's good for me. Now, I encourage you to do the same thing here if you want to hack around the fact that Neary is not a quote unquote window manager, but they do encourage you to use the dynamic workflow. So that's all going to come down to your preference. But yeah, this will be my way to handle opening specific apps on specific workspaces. All right. So as I was saying before, Neary does have infinite horizontal scroll, so we can kind of scroll forever here on one workspace. And this is somewhat convenient. You know, you can have a terminal here for your ceilings. You can run make and it says, oh, you know, hello world failed. So you head over to NeoVim and say, what's what's wrong with it? Okay. So I've got the fix. You can quickly apply your fixes. And move back to it and run make again and say, boom, okay, that, that worked out. But say you get tired of running ceilings and you want to move on to ziglings. Well, you could just have that on a different workspace. So you can go down one workspace and there you go, there's Ziglings. So you could do Zig build and as you see here, don't panic, just read the compiler message. So for Ziglings, it says main is not marked here. Looks like their function main is not public. So we go horizontally scroll over to Zig here. Yeah, go to line 18 and just make this a public function. That should work. So there you go, boom, zig build, and now we're already on problem two of ziglings. And you know, hey, we get bored of ziglings. Let's go back up to uh, let's go back up to ceilings. Hmm. We're back in ceilings here now, so we have comments. So you know, you see the power of what I'm saying, right? It's really the key is that you can very quickly move up and down between workspaces, left and right between windows within those workspaces. And we've got the overview. So if you get kind of a little bit lost on what you've got going on here. You can see everything you have with the overview. Now, for me personally, I let's say I'm up here, I've got my C bonsai, my C matrix, my 
config file. Okay, what's down here? Here's my Ziglings all set up. Let's actually look at the documentation on Ziglings. We've got a uh, Firefox window open here. Okay, let's take a look at the C documentation because we're gonna go back to ceilings. And all right, we got some C keywords. But yeah, point is you go back to the overview, you go up a couple tabs, boom, here I am. Right where I wanna be, so. Neary is very, very quick and powerful for stuff like that. But not only that, you can open up a bunch of terminals here and you can stack them horizontally, vertically as needed. And there you go, beautiful Wayland compositor. All right, so that's gonna be the end of today's video. Thanks for checking it out. And as always, if you would like to see something Linux or free and open source software related, drop a comment and I'll put it in the pipeline. And I wouldn't be able to end the video without an obligatory NeoFetch.